Hello everybody. I'm tempted to say good morning, but then again I know that some of you will be sharing in this service at different times and so I leave it simply as hello. I am Martin, presently serving as moderator of the General Assembly and it's a real privilege to be able to offer these services of worship and more so to be offering them collaboratively. I guess I could have done them myself easily enough, but I've enjoyed inviting others to take part. And so today in this service, you will meet Kim, one of our youth workers from Lindsay, and three of our newly ordained ministers, all of them into their very early months in ministry. Gosh, it must have been difficult and strange for them to be ordained and inducted but not really having an opportunity since then to meet their folk. So let's uphold them in prayer. We have Chris from Herbroth, we have Tim from Barhead, and we have Phil from up north in Rosshire. I'm thankful to all of them for taking part and to our tech operators who are making things possible behind the scenes. So come on. Let us bow before the Lord, our Maker. Let us come and worship. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Lord, that is our simple prayer today as we open our worship. That you would help us to turn our eyes upon you once again. 
that you would help us to look full into your wonderful face. That during this time, however brief, the things of earth would grow strangely dim. And Lord, help us once more to see clearly the light of your glory and your grace. Dear Jesus, we are aware of how heavily we carry the things of this earth, especially just now. We're so conscious of how much they weigh us down and demand our attention, of how they seem to be so all-consuming from our human perspective. Even now as we take part in this service, Lord, we want to lay down the things of this earth. Just as you led your friends up onto that high mountain, leaving behind the worries and the concerns of the world far below to see the incredible reality of who you are. So Lord, lift us up from the things of this world. Help us to raise our eyes from our human concerns and to turn our eyes upon you, Jesus. Forgive us for the things that we hold on to so tightly. Forgive us that we forget to look to you. Forgive us, Lord, that we get it so wrong, that you so often grow strangely dim in the darkness of our human perspective. Lord, take us by the hand once again today. Wherever we are just now, lead us up to a high place, we pray. Help us once again to see you and help us once again to hear your voice loud and clear. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Amen. Our Bible reading today comes from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. It's entitled, The Transfiguration. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him, and led them up on a high mountain, where they were all alone. And there he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say because they were frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly they looked around. They no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Amen. I mean, God bless these words to our ears this morning. When you think about it, do you imagine God above you, looking down? Or beside you, walking with you. I want to suggest that it isn't an either or but a both and. And I want further to suggest that whenever we as Christians find ourselves asking this kind of question, thinking about what God is like, we should start by looking at Jesus. How so? Because finding out about Jesus is finding out about God. Because seeing Jesus is seeing God. 
because coming to know Jesus is coming to know God. Scripture tells us as much. For example, at the beginning of his gospel, John writes that no one has ever seen God, but that the only Son has made him known. And Paul confirms as much in his letter to the Colossians. He declares that he, that is Jesus, is the visible likeness of the invisible God. And right at the beginning of the letter to the Hebrews, we read that the Son is the reflection of God's glory and the exact likeness of God's being. Isn't that fantastic? That Jesus is the exact likeness of God. It means that When we see who this Jesus is, as described in the Gospels, we are seeing who God is and what God is like. Of course, there will always be a sense in which God is shrouded in mystery. In light, inaccessible, hid from our eyes, as the old hymn has it. In this life, our knowledge of God will always be partial. We see in a mirror dimly. And yet we're not completely in the dark. God reveals something of God's being and nature and character in Jesus. So what is it in particular about Jesus that might help us to think about God and whether God is above us, looking down, or with us? Well, as I said, I think it's both. Neither way of thinking about God is wrong, but each needs the other to be right. At least if we're concerned to reflect upon the fullness of the picture. And my hunch is that that's exactly what Peter, James and John learned from their mountaintop experience. The mountaintop experience in Mark's Gospel that Phil read of earlier in our service and that we call the Transfiguration. Jesus had been and was with his disciples day by day. They walked with him, ate with him, asked questions of him, listened to him. And yet in this moment, he was something much more. And the glory of the divine blazed from him like a blinding light. Of course, this wasn't the only such occasion. In response to Jesus having calmed the storm, his disciples asked of each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And what must they have thought as he turned water to wine? As he healed those who were sick, as he cast out demons, as he fed hungry crowds and even raised those who had died? back to life. They knew him in the everyday and ordinary, that's for sure, and they knew him in the above and beyond extraordinary, when their earthly human categories were no longer of any use to them in describing Jesus. So in relation to my original question, they were coming to see that Jesus was like them and yet wholly different from them, that he was with them, yet immeasurably so, above them. To put that in some kind of theological framework, they were coming to see Jesus possessing both meekness and majesty, manhood and deity. And here, friends, is the truth of it. They knew Jesus as teacher and Lord, teacher and friend, but they were edging towards knowing him as Lord. That God is both imminent and transcendent. Fancy words these simply meaning that God is both near and far, here and there, with us and beyond us. No doubt each of us, perhaps according to our Christian schooling or even our temperament, 
favours one of these ways of seeing God more than the other. Some will focus on God as Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Others will marvel that God is here with us, close at hand, even as Joan Osborne's song suggests that he is one of us. For my own part, I lean in that direction. Thinking about Jesus leads me to thinking about God as being near me, with me. I think of God as Father. That's what comes most naturally to me. So, I need to pay attention so that I don't somehow forget that God is also holy and that I need to be on my knees before him. Actually, the Apostles' Creed is helpful in this, as it talks about God as Father Almighty. Father, pointing to the closeness of God, Almighty, indicating God's otherness. But even more importantly, Scripture gives us ample evidence of the need to envision God as Almighty, as being above and beyond as well as friend, as being near. Take this, for example, from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Or how about this from the letter to the Romans? Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. And of course, the church's hymnody echoes this. Holy, holy, holy. Though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see, Only thou art holy. There is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. So friends, the big picture is that God is above us and with us. Transcendent and imminent. And the benefits of our faith are lessened if we pay attention to only the one and not the other. Right now, in the midst of the awfulness of this pandemic, and as Elaine and I steer a course through family bereavement, there's great comfort in knowing that God is with us. In God we find strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Sometimes in our seeking after God, It's good to know that he's kneeling at our feet to comfort us more than just enthroned on high above us. I suppose it's like me being glad that I'd been here at home with Elaine at this time. If I'd been away, removed from her, of course we could have spoken on the phone, but it wouldn't have been the same. Sometimes you need to be near And in God we have that. He promises to be near, as near as the air we breathe. But we know too that God is almighty and that our God reigns. That God has the whole world in his hands. That God holds all time from beginning to end. And we are convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's because God is enthroned on high. Yes, that's because God is almighty, all-powerful, that God has no rival And yes, that God alone is worthy of our praise and worship. With us, 
and watching over us. We really do have the best of both worlds. Amen. Thanks be to God. One of the things that has been permitted in all phases of lockdown has been our ability of able to go out and exercise, to get some fresh air to take in our surroundings. We may not be able from our doorsteps to walk up a mountain and enjoy the vistas from the top, but we can appreciate the world around us. So our prayers for intercession today are based on reflections during daily exercise. Let's pray together. Loving God, the opportunity to wander our streets or visit the local park, a riverside walk or a local, a local path network reminds us of the wonder, the variety, beauty and fragility of our world, of the delicate balance that allows it to flourish and of the damage that ignorance, carelessness and greed can inflict on it. We pray for your world and for its people, for the parts where there continues to be war and conflict and those who are displaced in the crossfire, forced to live as refugees alongside strangers in an alien culture. For the parts where a lack of the right of amount of rain means persistent food shortages and hunger, the inability to provide for family and the resulting detrimental effect on health and education. Lord, grant us a glimpse of your glory Fill us with your spirit, refresh us, and make us new. Walking to that park or footpath often means walking past houses, local shops, the local school or the doctor's surgery and our local church. We thank you that you have created us to live in community, to share the pleasures of life with one another. So generous God, we pray for those whose experience during the pandemic is increased, increased workload, increased pressure and continual exposure to risk, leaving them exhausted and running on empty. For those for whom the opposite is true, unable to continue with their usual work and routine, bringing a sense of boredom and frustration, of worry and a lack of self-work. We pray for those who are alone for whom this extended lockdown has increased their isolation and reduced their confidence. Grant us a glimpse of your glory. Fill us with your spirit. Refresh us and make us new. And as we arrive back to our own street, to our own homes, we remember the people inside the houses around us, our friends, our neighbours, our own families, Healing God, we pray for those known and unknown to us for whom this season brings sadness and suffering, for those whose relationships have broken down, those whose health, mental and physical, has suffered, those who are waiting for hospital referrals or cancelled procedures, those who are struggling to come to terms not only with the loss of someone dear, but with the lack of the physical presence of others who would comfort and support them. In a moment of quiet, we name those known to us before you. Grant us a glimpse of your glory. Fill us with your spirit. Refresh us and make us new. Holy and eternal God, as we offer you our prayers today, by your Spirit, enable us to experience your holiness in our lives, a greater delight in your mystery, and a greater joy in seeking your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. i
Go now in peace, and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all, and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.